What's up guys? Today I thought we'd uh, narrow in a little bit on a particular country in Great Britain, so I figured why not Scotland first. So, let's do it. This is Travel Tuesdays. Every Tuesday we present you with another incredible destination. Today we're looking at 15 things you didn't know about Scotland. Just, just that right there, man. I've, <clears throat> I've never been, I, I've never seen that in real life. But I mean, that's just look at it, man. Like the greenery and the Scotland, it's crazy. Scotland. Welcome to Alux.com, the place where future billionaires come to get informed. That's exactly why I'm watching this video, future billionaire. Hello, Alaxers, and welcome back to our channel. I hope you're ready to don a kilt and wander the highlands. I saw that. I saw that. Um, I, I said I called some of them castles, and a lot of people clowned on me. Said it was a cathedral. I don't know if that one's a cathedral. It looks more like a castle because I think, you know, like a cathedral is more like a church. I don't know. It looks like a castle. Um, but I saw that in another video. I mean, uh, uh, no words because today we're talking about Scotland. As we've all seen in Braveheart <laughs> or train spotting, we know the unique accent, the amazing landscapes, the alcohol and the history already. Scotland is on the verge of potentially becoming an independent nation with a population of a little over 5.4 million citizens and some historical facts to keep. Emma, you get to go there all the time. Wow you awake for days. In the light of Brexit and other events, Scotland has a chance of gaining more and more popularity because if it weren't... All right, it's like four times I've already paused the video. Um, what's the deal with the uh, the Celts? Isn't that what it's called? A Celt, I believe? Um, if I'm wrong, I apologize. Somebody correct me. Why is that like a tradition? What was? Why is that part of the Scottish like uniform? I've never known that for them, a lot of modern things wouldn't have come to be, such as the modern telephone, speedos, raincoats. I'm sorry, that's not... Is, is that Scotland? I, I, I see that clock thing. I, I don't know. It, okay. Whiskey or color photography. Wait, wait, wait okay. I've spoiled it so Scotland much. Scotland has a chance of gaining more and more popularity because if it weren't for them, a lot of modern things wouldn't have come to be, mm. such as the modern telephone, speedos, raincoats, whiskey or speedos. color photography. <laughs> but you guys know we always try to find the most luxurious experiences and ludicrous facts. So let's dig in and see another side of Scotland not everyone knows about. If you're new here, welcome. Be sure to subscribe and follow us on Instagram at Alux. Number one, James Bond and Sherlock Holmes are of Scottish descent. A lot of people confuse Scotland and Ireland with England. They're all in the same region, all speaking the same language, and have a lot of things in common, but they also are different and unique. You might think that because TV portrayed Sherlock Holmes and James Bond in a certain way that they're British, but in fact, the two are of Scottish descent. Sherlock Holmes was written by a Scottish author, and James Bond has a Scottish background. These details are emphasized in the books, and somehow the producers forgot to mention them, and now everyone thinks these two heroes are true life. I'm sorry, see, it's, oh God, I'm gonna, what, I swear, I'm gonna be crucified for this. Why does that look like Elizabeth Tower? Elizabeth Tower, that's not in Scotland, that's, that's, in, that's in London, right? Oh God, I'm so screwed up. I'm sorry, guys. Londoners, when in fact they are Scottish. Number two, golf and curling were invented in Scotland. What? Golf is a sport. All right, obviously I know golf, but I don't know what curling is. And I know they're not talking about uh, curling like that played by rich people all over the world. But since it's so popular in America, Sweden, or Australia, people don't actually know that it was invented in Scotland back in the 15th century. Another sport invented in Scotland is oh. curling, a mix between hockey... 
I've seen that before at the Olympics, but I, I swear I did not understand what they were doing. Like they, they do something with the, the squeegee things. I, I don't know. And like this lady like pushes that disc and it keeps going. If they keep like rubbing the ice or something, somebody explained that to me because it looks really weird. I had no idea it was called curling. So that's, I'm already learning in this video golf and shuffleboard. You guys might not have heard about it because it's more popular in the UK and Canada, but just like golf, it was born in amazing Scotland and made it to the Winter Olympic Games. Other sports originating from Scotland are lacrosse, high jump, or hammer throw. Number 3. The most expensive scotch is worth $6.2 million. Scotland is famous for their whiskey and scotch production. There are a lot of well-known brands that have history behind them, so if you go to Scotland, you know you'll be drinking the finest scotch and possibly the most expensive. Okay, uh, I'm not a drinker at all. Like, uh, a couple of beers that have me pretty good and buzzed. If I ever go to Scotland, which I really want to, somebody's gotta help me find, like, for the first time, you know, ever, drinking scotch somebody's got to find me like the best scotch that you can find out there if i can afford it man this is so exciting one of the most expensive scotch whiskeys in the world that you can drink is the mccallan m scotch whiskey that retails for over six hundred and twenty eight thousand two hundred dollars per bottle the most expensive bottle of I won't be getting none of that, will I? <laughs> of whiskey is in fact made by a British company called Isabella Islay Whiskey Original, and it costs $6.2 million. As you may have guessed, the bottle is decorated with 8,500 diamonds and 300 rupees. Number 4. Dolly the Sheep was Scottish. Dolly the Sheep? Is that the sheep they cloned a long time ago? One it of is. the breaking points of science was a few years Whoa. ago when a group of professors and scientists from the University of Edinburgh successfully cloned a mammal. They cloned a sheep and named her Dolly, who's now the most famous sheep in the world. Dolly was the daughter of three mothers because they used one sheep for the DNA, one for the egg, and one to carry the embryo. She lived only six years and had offspring, but for scientists, she was the pioneer for the greatest success, and we bet Scottish people are beyond prideful for this achievement. Number 5. The richest man in Scotland is Glenn Gordon with a net worth of $2.5 billion. Dang. There aren't too many billionaires in <laughs> I bet you he can get some pretty good scotch. Scotland, only 11, and you can guess they are all involved in the whiskey industry. The richest person in Scotland is Glenn Gordon and his family that's been running the William Grant & Sons Distillery in Banffshire. He has a net worth of $2.5 billion and owns the Scotch whiskey labels Grant's, Glenfiddich, and the Balvenie, as well as Hendrix Gin. Mr. Glenn Gordon, if you ever see this, how about hook a brother up? Sponsor me. 5,000 people will see me advertising your, uh, your scotch. <laughs> wow. And a fun fact, a scotch has to be distilled in Scotland to be named a scotch whiskey, so they are definitely dominating the market. Number six, Donald Trump may be laundering money through <laughs> Scotland. <laughs> I did not expect to see. Oh my God, I did not expect to see him on this video. Properties. President Donald Trump is one of the most talked about presidents in the world. Every week, something else seems to come up, and we find ourselves talking about him all the time. For real. Since he has a back even in a all about Scotland video, we're talking about Trump. Background in business, he may not be as clean as he claims to be. He spent almost no. $250 million on rehabilitating a golf club back in 2014. It seems that every time he buys something, he makes a new legal entity to manage it. Just for the helicopter he owns in Scotland, he made a new entity that is under 14 other entities, which make it very hard to investigate. This acquisition may be linked to his Russian business and the election, but there's not enough evidence for that yet. Number 7. 
Catholic priests in Scotland are out of control when it comes to child abuse. Unfortunately, all right, time out before we get to that depressing number seven. I just took notice that this is an American narrating this. So, yeah, I'm sure, I don't know, you guys let me know how accurate she is. I'm counting on you guys to help me out with this video. The most disturbing thing that still happens in most Catholic churches is child abuse and rape. The 1980s and 90s were out of control, as some claim, because the church turned a blind eye to all of the abuses. Since then, a lot of other cases have been brought to light, but nothing ever happens to the abusers. Some hope that their cases will end up on a judge's table and get justice because the Scottish cardinals are defending themselves and covering up their institution. Does anyone know why it's like, it seems like it's all like within the, uh, you know, religious, you know, denominations out there and all that. Why is it all concentrated to like Catholic priest? It, it seems like the bulk of most of all cases of child abuse, as far as, you know, in the, as far as priests and stuff like that are Catholic priests, like, I don't, why is that? Or was it just uncovered with them? I mean, I'm sure it's happened in other places, but it's like we only focus on the Catholic, you know, side of things. I don't know, guys. This is, this is going to be a very interesting video for you guys to help me out on. Number eight. Robert David Lang was Scotland's most famous and controversial psychiatrist. In the psychiatric world, there are other famous people, not just Freud. One of them was R.D. Lang, the most famous and talked about psychiatrist in the 1960s. He wrote books, he befriended celebrities and rock stars, and tried to promote LSD for stress. His life and career will be turned into a movie called Mad to be Normal, and he'll be played by a Scottish actor. Unfortunately, as years went by, his career began to fall apart and his theories dismantled. Furthermore, his views and practices are no longer accepted by modern psychiatrists. Number 9. They have a chili capital city. Chilies are one of the most famous spices. They make everything a little more intense, more colorful, and of course, more spicy. They are originally from Latin America, Mexico, and some parts of Asia, but with globalization, they are now grown all over the world, even in Scotland. Mark Hodgson loves chili so much, he managed to turn his city into Scotland's capital of chili. He now grows along with other people all sorts of chilies and help to boost tourism in the area. Wow. Mark hopes that soon everyone will start growing chilies at home and establish a chili festival. All right, that was a, uh, it sounded kind of like a, a cop out for a, a number there. That just didn't, did it seem that important, you know, as it relates to Scotland. It just didn't seem like that would be important. Number 10. The most expensive Scottish house ever sold went for 32. Whoa, my God, look at the house. It, it literally looks like a castle. Point eight million dollars. Up until recently, the most expensive house in Scotland was for sale. The huge and posh estate, which is in fact a 22,000 acre property with a beautiful castle, has sold to a Russian billionaire for $25 million. Tulchan Estate is a massive sporting estate with fishing facilities, a farm, a distillery, and a private club for exclusive members. The castle used to have royal guests, like King Edward VII or King George V, who all loved and appreciated- How old is that castle? It, I swear it looks almost new, unless they just really restored it. Or, I don't know, y'all let me know. The beautiful setting, extraordinary hospitality, and sporting pursuits of one of the leading Scottish estates. Feeling a little bit royal, Alexers? Why not head over to our video about Queen Elizabeth II of England to find out more about her life as a monarch at 90 years old? Just click in the top right corner to check it out. Number 11. Chicken tikka masala was invented in Glasgow. I don't even know what that is. 
Because India used to be a British colony, a lot of Indians have moved to England over the years, opening Indian restaurants and influencing the modern British culture. Although Indian menus have a variety of tikka masala dishes, they are not originally from India. Rumor has it that chicken tikka masala originates from Scotland. Some say it originates from Bangladesh or Pakistan, but most sources debate between the UK and India. Looks like Scotland has a hand in a lot of things we know and love on a daily basis. Number 12. The first international football match was played in Scotland. Whoa. Another first we have to credit Scotland for is the first official international. Something I'm trying to learn about, so hey. First international football match was played in Scotland. All right. National football or soccer game. The sport originates from ancient Chinese and Greek times, but with all the rules and teams as we know it today, comes from England. Because playing against other countries wasn't popular, the first game between two nations was held in Scotland, and it was between Scotland and England back in 1872. Wow. Fast forward to present day, and the who won? These two countries are still madly in love with football and have the most loyal fans. Number 13. You can sail in style and visit Scotland's islands. Even though Scotland is a small country, they also have more than 790 islands you can visit if you feel adventurous. The best way to do that is by cruising them. There are a few yachts and ships that offer this service in the most luxurious setting for this activity. One of them is the Hebridean Princess, which has a reputation for its delicious food, wine, and crew of 38 to serve the 50 guests on board. They offer private suites and rooms with ensuite bathrooms, starting from 4,300 pounds. This starting price is for a six to seven night trip, includes two gala dinners, and of course, the added feeling that you're a lord or lady for the entire trip. Number 14. Their national animal is a unicorn. Oh man, my little girls would love that. Scotland's gonna be their favorite country and the UK just because of unicorns. That's crazy. How did their national animal become a unicorn? I'm sure I'm about to find out. Most countries have a national animal or a national flower depending on which one is more common and relevant for them. Scotland is a Catholic country with a lot of history, so you might expect something strong as a national symbol. However, they chose a unicorn. Some say it's because it used to be the enemy of the lion, which is the symbol of England, with whom they fought for decades. Oh. The unicorn has a lot of meanings and symbols, and they all tie in with Scotland's history to a T. Although unicorns might not be real, they still stand strong with their decision. Number 15. They have a national elephant polo team. Huh? If you thought that polo on a horse was uncomfortable, then try playing it on an elephant. This type of polo is more familiar in Asia, where elephants are more common, but that doesn't mean that other countries can't enjoy it too. In fact, Scotland has the best team of elephant polo players. They're so good they beat Nepal's national team. It's an international sport played by both women and men. Scotland's team is very competitive and takes great pride in playing and winning this competition. The team is captained by the Duke of Argyle, because who else would play such an extravagant sport? Elephants. As you can see, Alexers, there's a reason why England doesn't want to let Scotland go. They basically made the world a better place and make for great film sets and even better actors. Besides all the crazy national animals, sports, and whiskey, Scotland's identity has a humor like no other. Do you agree? Let us know in the comments below. And for sticking- I'll let you guys answer that for me. All right, so much With us all the way to the end and being a true Alexer, of course, you get a bonus. Here it is. Number 16. 14% of Scottish people are redhead and over 40% carry the gene. Where's all my red-headed Scottish people? Huh? Where's all my red-headed Scots? Let me know. Redheads are a rarity. Less than 2% of the world is redhead, mostly found in Northern and Western Europe and less in America and Asia. Out of all countries, Scotland is the only country with almost 14% of their population to be red-headed. And if that wasn't enough, almost 40% of Scottish people carry the redhead gene. Wow. So if you've got it, 
flaunt it. And if you want to see more redheads, then go to the motherland it's of gingers, beautiful. good old Scotland. Thank you for spending some time with us, Aluxer. I really hope that that video was was accurate because I, I was pretty entertained by that one. I need my Scots here to help me out on this one to let me know how, how good this video was. Is it is it true or not? Or if some of them are true, like I think number nine didn't seem like it really should have been in there, but hey, that's me. You guys let me know. I'm out.